Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, the Lord, and the Savior, Jesus the Christ. The text comes from the Gospel reading today, that long list of names, to see if we can find some treasures out of all the listing that Matthew gave in his first chapter. Please join me in a word of prayer. Father and Lord, we ask for your blessings upon this day. We gather around the Lord the manger. We gather, O Lord, around the altar, where now the body of Christ is present with us. For here, O Lord, in this manger we receive the reason why that body and blood came into this world, to forgive us our sins and to reconcile us with you. Help us, O Lord, to understand how Christmas is for reconciliation, of bringing a family that was estranged back together again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Friends in Christ, it was October. The Sunday school teachers at Redeemer Lutheran Church knew what was on the agenda. The selection of the children's Christmas program. That always brings up a lot of interesting discussion. What program should be selected? <clears throat> Steve, uh, the high school teacher, started it off, said, well, whatever program we choose, let's make sure we tell the story of the true meaning of Christmas. Let's make sure the program counters the current thought that Christmas is just for children. Ruth, this eighth grade teacher, said sarcastically, Well, I saw the meaning of Christmas last year an empty Walmart parking lot on Christmas Day. <laughs> what if you ever see the parking lot of Walmart empty at 8 o'clock in the morning? That's the meaning of Christmas. Well, John, trying to keep things back in line, said, Let's put a real Christian spin, maybe, on the Charlie Brown Christmas special. You know the story. In the end, Linus recites Luke's chapter 2. This comes after Charlie Brown was trying to run the program and given the task of finding the perfect Christmas tree and everything. And everywhere he goes, he just sees commercialization all over the world. And at the end, he gets very frustrated and screams, Can somebody please tell me what Christmas is all about? And Charlie... Brown goes to the side as Linus goes to the center of the stage and asks for lights. And he simply recites Luke chapter 2. And then he looks at Charlie Brown and says, that's the meaning of Christmas, Charlie Brown. Let's do a spin on the Charlie Brown Christmas special because I don't think, Steve said, that Linus goes far enough. He recites the narrative but he doesn't really kind of tell us the why of the narrative. Yes, John, the seventh grade teacher, said, let's find something that tells us the reason for the visitation. Well, Mary, the kindergarten teacher, responded, well, that's great. I like the idea of trying to communicate what is the reason for the visitation. Let's use Luke chapter 2 to communicate the message that Jesus has come to welcome all the marginalized and all the outcasts of society and to make us one big happy family. You know how we do this? We emphasize the role of the shepherds. We have the program focused on how the shepherds were outcasts, how they were considered scum of the earth. They were not welcomed in courts. They were not really welcomed in town. They were the untouchables of Israel. Emphasize that at the birth of Jesus, who are the first ones to lay eyes on this Christ? The untouchables. Let's communicate the message that Jesus brings a family together. Because you know how people like to gather for Christmas, right? It's not just for children, but Christmas is for family gatherings. 
Well, another teacher said, I think we can look at this Charlie Brown special and put a spin on it where we talk about Christmas is a season for giving. <clears throat> there are people that are hurting out there. People that could use some warm clothing, some food. Let's talk about how Christmas is forgiving. And I know exactly the verse we can use out of Luke chapter 2. And that is what the angel said, For today in the city of David there has been born for you. Gift. So now there was ideas all over the table. Christmas is more than just for children. Christmas is a time where God brings family together. Christmas is a time where gifts are given to the needy. But Martha, the third grade teacher who sat silently for quite some time, stood up to say something. She was highly respected. Whenever she spoke, people listened to her. And Martha said, I like the idea of a twist on a Charlie Brown Christmas special. But I think we need to use Matthew chapter 1, 1 through 25 as the basis for the program. Whoa, objection raised all around. And you might even know why some of those objections were raised all around. Especially when you just heard those verses of all those names. <laughs> but Martha argued, the reason why I think Matthew is the better one is because he's more explicit about the reason for the visitation. You know, it's true that Jesus had shepherds look upon him. It's true that God gave his son. But Matthew says it very clearly. She opened up her Bible and read Matthew 1, 21 to the Sunday school teachers. And this is what it says. She will bear a son. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. How much clearer can it be than that? Matthew speaks the clarity of the cause of the visitation better than Luke. Well, the teachers began to say she may have a point. But Martha, what are you going to do with all those names? The genealogy is boring. People will be fast asleep by the time you mention even the name Abraham. <laughs> Mary Connor. That's the point. The names. Have you ever really looked at the names in the genealogy? Well, John Ferdinand, right. yes, uh, Martha, I have looked at the names, and I have to tell you, some of those are X-rated. <laughs> I don't know if they're really fitting for a children's Christmas program. I mean, you got the name of Tamar? She was guilty of incest. Had relations with her father-in-law, Jacob. What do we do with that? And then uh, you got that Rahab in there. Whoa, Rahab. Wasn't she the prostitute in Jericho? I mean, are these things we want to talk about? And then even Matthew, he couldn't even mention the lady's name who committed adultery. He was so ashamed of her, as well as probably she should be ashamed of herself. Matthew does not mention her by name Bathsheba. He mentions her as the wife of Uriah the Hittite. What do you do with that, Martha? What do you do with that? And of course, they didn't have Ruth in the genealogy. She wasn't even part of the descendants of Jacob. What do you do with that, Martha? Martha said, that's exactly what we need to communicate, right? We need to communicate that through the program, Jesus is the son of sinners. Matthew does that the best. That Jesus 
absorbs all the sins of humanity. He absorbs those sexual sins which we consider to be abhorrent to conversation. He absorbs the sins of incest, prostitution, and adultery. He takes them to the cross. Why the genealogy even has a section on welcoming the outcast. Look at Ruth. She was a Moabite. And yet she's welcomed in the genealogy of Christ. Can't you see? Matthew has it all. The teachers pondered the saying of Martha. And in the end, Martha had good points. Using the Gospel of Matthew as the basis for the upcoming children's Christmas program would be an effective way of stating an important truth against the accepted thoughts about Christmas in today's society. The thought that Christmas is for children. Christmas is for gift giving. Christmas is for family gatherings. No, for the Gospel of Matthew, the program would counter all those thoughts by communicating this. Christmas is for sinners of all ages, like you, like me. It just isn't for children anymore. In his name, Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds.